Have you ever wanted to get into the Ivy League? Have you dreamed of the successful life you'd have if you did so? Have you watched hundreds of thousands of videos trying to find an answer to the age-old question of, how do I get in, and never found one? Well, sit back, relax, and take it all in, because you're about to learn how to do just that here today. But before we get there, let me tell you a quick story. If you haven't watched this video right here, I highly suggest you pause here, watch that video, and come back to this video to get a full background on different types of schools and the type of students each school tends to accept. However, as a quick refresher, the different school types are humanities havens, schools that specialize in humanities and tend to accept students interested in those fields, technology towns, schools who specialize in the STEM fields and tend to accept students who are interested in STEM as well, political science paradises, schools who specialize in political science and the social sciences and tend to accept students who are interested in those fields, and finally, business boroughs, schools who are dedicated to their business schools and accept students interested in business and the finance spaces. Similar to that, on the student side, there are five common student types. Those being a STEM scholar, a student whose resume is peppered and colored by their passion for and participation in STEM fields. The humanities intellectual, a student whose extracurricular experience in high school is dominated by their experiences in the humanities. The sharp social scientist, a student obsessed with the social sciences and spends most of their time exploring that particular passion. The professional polymath, a student who's interested in a number of different subjects, extracurriculars, and does them all very well. And then finally, the athletic academic, an athletic student whose resume is mostly composed of their athletic achievements and accomplishments. Now Princeton is a political science paradise, so the advice given in this video will be the best advice any student should apply if they hope to get not only into Princeton, but similar schools like it as well. With all that being said, Here's the strategy and advice each type of student can use to get into a school like Princeton. We're going to look at what it takes for each archetype of student to get into a school like Princeton and what they would need to do each year, starting from their freshman year, going all the way to the winter of their senior year, to have the best chance of getting in. Athletic academics have a completely different high school path for getting to Princeton as compared with other students. To start, they on average get a 1.66 multiplier on their odds of making into the school, which increases their odds from 5.5% to 9.13%. This is a fairly significant increase in terms of their odds of making into the school. In other words, their odds jump from about a 1 in 18 chance of making into Princeton to about a 1 in 11 chance of making it into the school. However, unlike most students who have quite a bit to consider when applying to a school like Princeton, an athletic academics path is a fairly straightforward, yet difficult way of getting into the school. Now let's take a look at what a person needs to do, starting from their freshman year, to be that one person of the 11 who does in fact make it into Princeton. Warm sun and gentle ocean breeze caresses your skin as you count down the final days of summer. It's the summer before your freshman year of high school, and while you don't want summer to end, you're excited to begin high school and start a new journey. You've likely just finished the season for a sport you played in middle school, or are just starting a season for a sport you're about to do this fall. For you, you understand that these next three years are up to you, and how you perform in these next three years are what will make or break your future. As I mentioned before when discussing sharp social scientists and humanities intellectuals, freshman year is where the college race starts. The actions you take your freshman year will compound and give you a much better chance of getting into the school of your dreams, or make those dreams much harder to achieve. For athletic academics, this is a little bit different. Since they don't need to rely on academics as much as other students, 
for this reason, we won't focus on it as much, as they can be a mix of any other archetype of student they want to be, and still achieve the same end goal. The only thing that matters for them is developing into a good enough athlete over the next three years to get a potential recruitment offer or admission based on their sports potential from a school like Princeton. Some important questions you want to answer during this time are 1. Can I become elite enough in my sport to catch the eye of a college scout? And 2. Will I be able to keep a top level performance in my sport for my entire high school career? Figuring these two things out at this point in your high school career will give you a massive leg up over the competition and place you in a phenomenal position to succeed later on in your journey. Now fast forward to the summer after your freshman year is over. You made your school's varsity team and you were doing well. You have a solid trajectory and are likely to be in the top 10% of the country by the end of your sophomore year. So far, things are looking up as you head into your sophomore year. Now you're a sophomore. You're not a rookie anymore. You're not quite a veteran at the school, but you know your way around and are familiar with how the school works, you're friendly with some of the teachers at the school, and you have a much better idea of your place in the school environment. This year, however, things are getting even more serious. Things are going well for you, and you believe that you may have a chance of landing a spot at one of the top schools in the country. Every once in a while, you see a scout at your game talking to your coach, or they'll be in the stands taking notes and observing how you play. But now you know that they know who you are. Now with a school like Princeton, there's a minimum academic standard students have to achieve to be considered as a prospective recruit. And even though that standard may be somewhat flexible, depending on the skill of the athlete, some questions any student who is like this needs to consider are, one, can I maintain the academic standard required of me while still dedicating the necessary time required to excel my sport? Two, how likely am I to maintain a consistent level of health to get into and maintain myself at this elite level? 3. How likely am I to be the top 1% of athletes for this sport in my country? Answering these three questions will set a student up for maximum success when they truly start the college application process, which for an athletic academic might be very, very soon. Now here's where things get interesting. While most students have their entire junior year and the summer afterwards to think about which schools they want to attend, an athletic academic may need to make that decision in the spring of their sophomore year or the summer afterward in preparation for the first wave of recruiting prospective recruits receive in the spring of their junior year of high school. This means that in the spring of their sophomore year or the summer afterward, these type of students should consider traveling to the many universities they may get offers from to get a good idea of where they may want to go in the future. And with this in mind, we enter junior year. Now the junior year of an athletic academics high school career is composed of a lot of waiting. This year usually goes one of two ways. Either A, they receive offers from a number of schools in the spring of their junior year and accept one of them, or B, like every other type of student, they apply in the fall of their senior year, are notified in the winter or spring of their senior year whether or not the school they like to go to accepts them or not. However, regardless of what does or does not happen during this time, nothing truly changes about what this type of student needs to do during this season of their high school career. Given that they're applying to a school with sufficiently high standards and expectations, like Princeton, they'll still need to take sufficiently rigorous coursework and perform well on the SAT. The only thing that truly changes is whether or not they have to write a common application essay and apply in the fall. In the case that they're in the first round recruits, one of the best recruits Princeton has to consider, they will not. But in the case that they are in the second round recruits, they will. Now let's talk about the process for a student who is in the second round recruit. During this time, the spring of their junior year, this type of student should set themselves up early so that they're in a good position to be off to the races once they start their applications in the fall. This entails asking for recommendations from the teachers they want early, usually in the spring of their junior year, touring the schools they're interested in, again, that spring or summer before their senior year, and taking the SAT at least two times before the end of the summer after their junior year, 
and starting the process of writing the initial drafts of their common application essays. With all this in place, we can fast forward to the summer after your junior year where everything is taken into account. This summer is the most important summer for every single type of student, and this is no different for the athletic academic. Your goal for this summer is to finalize your application essays and do extensive research on the schools you're looking to apply to. By doing this, you'll be in a fantastic position to capitalize on the thing that'll be key for you getting into Princeton, early admission. As mentioned before, I could do an entire video speaking on this point in time in a student's application alone. But what matters is that you've completed as much as possible of your application to these various schools, or at least set yourself to do so, before the autumn of your senior year. Now finally, we enter the fall of your senior year of high school. Here's where we can go into the nitty gritty as it relates to a specific strategy when applying to Princeton as an athletic academic. Now it's finally the autumn of your senior year, a time when everything you did in the previous three years of high school comes into play. Before this point, everything you did was simply set up to help put you in the position to get into Princeton. Now let's talk about how you'll actually get in. The first thing you'll want to do is apply early. Applying early is your best friend. I cannot stress this enough. Students who apply early, especially those from among the top level applications to a given school, get a tremendous boost in terms of their odds of making it into the school they want. Let me explain how. Looking online, the accepted early application acceptance rate for Princeton hovers right around 15%. Now, do you know what the regular application acceptance rate is? Less than 3%. These two wildly differing numbers is why a student who's interested in going to an Ivy League school needs to apply early to that school. They get a substantial increase in their odds of getting in because there are simply fewer people applying, and thus, more of a chance to wow an admissions officer and claim those critical yes spots early. The next thing all athletic academics should do if they want to be the one out of 11 athletic academics who apply to Princeton and get in is a focus on life beyond their sport and what value they can add to the university beyond the sport they are participating in. This is critical. Athletic academics are presented with the opportunity to have a clear role on campus they can fit into immediately. And if you have seen this video, you'll understand just how important that is for getting into any elite school, Princeton included. However, what cannot be conveyed through a person's role on a sports team is how well they would fit into life beyond the sport. This is where this strategy comes into play. What a student should communicate here are the things they're looking forward to accomplishing, experiencing, and doing beyond the sport they're playing. By doing this, they establish the idea that Princeton isn't simply going to be a place where they just play sports, but instead could be their new future home. By painting an image that you belong at the school and you would fit right into their community, it makes it much more likely that they'll do just that. The third and final thing an athletic academic should do to give themselves the best odds of getting to Princeton is highlight their leadership ability and potential throughout their application. As I'm sure you've come to expect now, leadership and the ability to be a mentor to a group of people goes a long way on a college application. Princeton prides itself on being the school that cultivates the next generation of future leaders. Demonstrating leadership ability will definitely catch the eye of admissions at the school and help show them in no uncertain terms that you belong there. I could use an entire video breaking down this particular strategy even more as there are a number of things an athletic academic could do to improve their application even further. If you'd like to see that, Leave a comment below letting me know and I'll be sure to make a video diving even deeper into this particular topic. But in broad terms, the three steps to getting into Princeton are as follows. Step zero, set yourself up for success. This step is the step that gives you a fighting chance of being considered in the first place by a university like Princeton and getting your foot in the door, so to speak. For an athletic academic, this means taking and doing well in the classes of their choice and competing at a high level at their chosen sport. This step is the most important step and helps put a student in a good position for the following steps. Step 1. 
apply early. This applies to all students who want to get into a particular school in the Ivy League. If you have a dream school in mind that you'd like to go to, make sure you apply early to that school. There are a number of benefits that come from applying early, but the main one is that your odds of getting into a school like Princeton, Harvard, Stanford, and Yale, etc. can increase by five, six, or even seven-fold by simply just applying early. Every student should capitalize on this advantage by putting themselves in a position to apply early with a stellar application. Step two, focus on life beyond your sport. Princeton, like all elite schools, is looking to first and foremost build a community of exceptional people at their university. What this means is that even though a student may be valuable to the university for their athletic ability and skill, if they do not fit into the Princeton culture, or Princeton doesn't believe that they'll be a good fit to the university, they might not be picked at all. This is why it's important especially for athletic academics, to highlight how they'll fit into the larger Princeton University campus beyond simply participating in their sport there. This will allow the university to have a much easier time seeing them as a part of the Princeton culture and accepting them as a result. Step three, highlight your leadership ability. This last step is the cherry on top of an athletic academic college application. Leaders on a sports team are critical to the team's health and success. By demonstrating capacity for leadership, you're able to make yourself that much more valuable to the team and the school as a whole. If you're an athletic academic, following those three, four including step zero, will give you a substantial increase in your odds of getting into Princeton. While this video did go somewhat in depth into this topic, I recommend taking a look at some of the helpful links in the description box below as it contains helpful material that goes much deeper into this topic than I could do so here. If you'd like me to make a video diving even deeper into these topics and the strategies for this type of student, just leave a comment below letting me know and I'll be sure to make one. Now let's move on to what's next.